Well, for those who don't know, we're in a series that we're calling Shape. And uh, you can see it there. Shape stands for spiritually gifted. H stands for heart, A, abilities. P today being personality and experiences, our previous and our experiences that we have in life. And as we've gone through this series, we've talked about this, that each one of you sitting here is that you are significant to God. That God did not create you to take up space. That God uh, has a plan, he has a purpose for you, and that you are unique to him. And, and we very first week, we talked about the fact that in some ways we're like a bit of clay, that God's ever shaping us, ever shaping us into the purposes that he has for us. But one thing we've actually got to be willing is to be willing to allow him to do that and to be open to it as well. And there's some key verses that we've highlighted for this series. The first one comes out of Job chapter 10, verse 8, that says that God has formed me and shaped me. And you can, put, you can put your name where the word me is. That God has formed Tim and shaped him. And Psalm 139 says, you, you've created every part of me. You put, together, put me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. So we are complex. It's amazing to think about. Your workmanship is marvelous. God has created no duplicates, that we are unique. And included in that uniqueness is your personality. As I say each week, encourage you to take a few notes or some of you draw the, the message or whatever it might be, but I encourage you to just reflect on a few of the thoughts that I want to share this morning. Now, when it comes to personalities, this next slide is going to highlight, it's this, personality refers to the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you act. And there was a song written back 1959. Some of you may remember this. For others of us, you have no idea of this song. But it was a song called Personality by a guy by the name of Lloyd Price. And he wrote it about a, about a, about a friendship. And just the chorus, and we'll play it at the end of the service, but uh, right at the very end after we're all logging off per se, but it goes like this, because you've got personality. You walk with personality. You talk with personality. You smile with personality. You charm with personality. And you love with personality. We've all got personality. Now, part of your personal personality comes from the hereditary factors that you inherited. And, you know, there's nothing worse, I think, as, as I was growing up, and people would say to me, oh, you, you just like your father and uh, you just act like your mum or whatever. Has anyone experienced that? All right, if you haven't, I think you're telling porky pies because I think that's actually what happens. I, I remember one time with my son, Sam, when he was little. And uh, um, anyway, my dad, my dad, when we, we had this trait that if we had a runny nose, he'd always pull out his hanky and he'd wipe our noses really hard and he'd go, <laughs> It was just really weird. And uh, anyway, one time, Sam, you guessed it, he had a runny nose. I wiped it and I went, <laughs> and I went, oh, no, my father, oh, my dad, no, what's going on? You know, part of our personality comes from the environment that we're in. Part of it is your choice. Your personality is actually partly inborn, but it's also learnt as well that you're a complex combination of many, many different traits. I read this week that scientists say up to there, 18,000 different character traits have been identified. 18,000. And you, you are a combination of those, that we are complex. So when someone says, or you hear it said, man, you don't have a personality. Well, it's not true. Your personality influences every area of your life. It influences how the decisions that you make, uh, how you deal with change and how you don't deal with change, how, how you solve problems. It influences what makes you happy and what makes you sad. It influences what you think is funny and what you don't think is funny at all. It influences, and it should influence, the kind of ministry that God wants you to have in serving him. It influences every area. You 
the last week, I went on a very small plane with nine very good friends of mine. We do a golf weekend every year. And uh, we were boarding a plane that, um, as we boarded it, I got to see everybody's personality because we were boarding a very, very small plane. I think there's an image going to come up. There it is. Some, when we saw the plane, were so happy. This is going to be great. I can't wait. I hope it goes up and down, up and down. You know, some of us were agitated. We didn't like hearing that at all. Some went up to a very place of nervousness. Some were very talkative. Some were very silent. All these personalities all just came out just on a plane. Let me just tell you, on the way home, it was going up and down, up and down, and some were laughing. Some of us were silent. And to be honest, some had their head in paper bags. But your personality is, is different. Yours is not the same as mine. But here's what I want to highlight to you too as well today. Your personality influences how you relate to God. Now, some of us, some people relate to God in a very quiet, meditative, contemplative kind of way. Some people relate in a very emotional, loud kind of way. We're different. But here's the key thing that we want to look at today. One of the number one ways your personality shows up is how you relate with other people. And that includes other followers of Jesus too. I want to focus a little bit on that because it affects how we go about living the purpose that God has for you and I, how we relate to one another. The Bible talks about this. I want to give you three uh, points in just a minute, but I want to just start by just giving a little outline. And and I want to start with 1 Corinthians 12 because we notice this, that it says that God works through different people in different ways. God works through different people in different ways, but it's the same God who is in all of us and helps us in everything we do. So so it's obvious. God loves variety. He loves differences. We're different in every area of our lives because we're unique. Yet this can cause us to misunderstand one another and it can cause people to misunderstand you. But God has given you the personality that you have, and he did it for a purpose, that he did it intentionally. Now, numbers of you here, you may have well have done personality tests. Has anyone done like Miles Briggs and all those? There's lots of those sort of things out there, and they're all, they're all helpful. But here's the thing again. You've got to remind yourself, well, I, I am unique. So it's not going to give you the exact answer. But look, because we are, we are different. I want to share this just with a little bit of a longer illustration. I want you to imagine this. Think about going on a holiday and you're going with family or you're going with friends. And these are just four different personalities. You might go at the end of this. Well, I don't relate to any of them. Some of you, when you go on a holiday with your family, your number one uh, priority on your holiday is to have fun. That is it. You're just fun. You don't plan anything because you just want fun. You've got the best stories and those stories get bigger and bigger as the years go by. But you just love to have fun on your holidays. You don't plan anything. Others of you, when it comes to a holiday, you're like you're always in control. And that includes the holiday. Your strong personalities. Some might think, well, he's a bit bossy or demanding. But you want it done the right way. You make work out of leisure. You, You have no time... To rest because it isn't work. Some of you, when it comes to a holiday, you are the most organised person that anyone could ever imagine. You take a labeller, you take coat hangers. You are just incredible. You're so organised. You got every meal mark. You got every. And if you stop at McDonald's, that just ruins it all. You don't do out of nowhere stops at McDonald's for some food. You keep notes of everything, including all the receipts for your budget. Everything must be perfect. And then some of you. You just go with the flow. You just like to sleep. You like to chill out. You like long, long walks. You don't take a watch. Your favourite saying is whatever, happy to fit in. I might have a snooze. You sit back and let everyone else do the planning, set up, pack up, leave the adventures, cook the food, and you drive everyone else nuts. 
That's just the holiday. Now, just think about it as we come into a church context. We bring into this place all sorts of different personalities. And it's hard at times, isn't it, to get on with everyone because of our different personalities. 1 Corinthians 2.11 says it's only our own spirit within us that knows all about us. Or as another version puts it, no one can really know what anyone else is thinking or what he's really like except the person himself. As a result, because we're different, what happens is there's conflict. Now, a lot of us would say, I don't like conflict. I'm not someone that likes conflict, but it comes. Because here's the thing. I can't assume you think the way I do. And I can't assume that that I know how you feel all the time as well. We're, we're different. But most of your problems in life are people problems. If you think about the Bible just for a sec and the different personalities, this is really obvious. These are just a few that I wrote down. The brothers Jacob and Esau. And we'll get back to them in just a sec. Totally different personalities. Joseph with his brothers, Paul and Barnabas, Paul and John Mark, Paul and Peter. Bit of a theme there, maybe. There, there are many different problems that come as a result of personality. So I want to share three things. If you haven't written anything else down, I encourage you to write these three things down or draw them, whatever it is. And I want you to know that Tim Dyer has not conquered them. It's been said that 80% of people who fail in a job do so not because of lack of ability, but because they don't know how or want to get along with people. And I'd say this sadly, and this is so sad for me, that in the church for many a year, what we're talking about here of people not getting along has been one of the greatest tools that Satan has ever used. Of holding back the good news of Jesus because people don't get on and it stops them moving forward of God's purposes. And that breaks God's heart. So, here are three things that I think can really help in this be aware of personality differences, be aware. Proverbs 19 11 says a person's wisdom. Gives them, gives them patience. And the more you understand how people act and react, the more patient you be, will be with them. And for this to happen, I really believe it starts by thinking beyond yourself. And that can be hard at times. God, God wants you to not only understand your personality, but he wants you to understand the personality of people around you. Because once we can start to do that, it's actually shaping you in a great way for his purposes. You know, when we are not aware of why people act the way they do, we can find ourselves, mis we can actually find ourselves judging someone, misunderstanding them, being impatient with them, being totally in conflict with them. How many people are you in conflict with right now? Don't have to call it out, of course, but how many are you? Do you live in constant conflict with others? You know, for those who are married, you probably married someone who may well be very close to your opposite. I think that's proof to me in some ways of God's humour in some ways. You know, when I, look, when I look at him putting Son and I together, I think he knew Tim needed an opposite. You know, the, in, within a marriage, an extrovert can marry an introvert. Someone who's structured may well end up married to someone who's unstructured. But that's how he made us. That's who we are. You know, I believe a lot of the early problems in a number of marriages and even within churches can be summed up this way. Why aren't you normal like me? Son? No, I'm only joking. Tim? No, anyway, she's the most patient human I've ever met. But anyway, we keep moving forward. Be aware of personality differences. And, and that flows into 
our children as well. You know, there's absolutely no doubt as parents, we, we can fall into that trap of wanting them to have the same personality as us. Let's go back to Esau and Jacob. This is what the Bible says. Esau loved the outdoors, but Jacob was a quiet man who stayed at home. These two guys did not get on well at all. So be aware, so have an awareness of personality differences. But second of all, accept personality differences. The Bible has heaps to say about this. Romans 15, 7 says this. Accept each other just as Christ has accepted you. Let me read that again. Accept each other just as Christ has accepted you. In order, okay, so this is where it starts. In order so you can praise God. So that you can give God glory. This is significant, this verse, for me. Don't overlook this. To really worship God, to bring him glory, it's important we need to accept one another. You know when we have communion, uh, we read the first few verses there um, that's read each week, and then Paul follows this up when he after talking about the bread and the cup, he actually says, before you take it in a sense, this is just the quick Tim interpretation, make sure you are right with your brother, your sister, your friend before you take it. Make sure your relationship is right before you do that. We can skip over that sometime. Again, to really worship and bring glory to God, accept others. Maybe that's the one thing you need to take from today above anything else. You know, I've discovered this, that, that when you look at the um, 12 disciples of Jesus, they, they were as opposite as night and day. John was meditative. Peter was Mr. Impulsive, Mr. Energy, Mr. Foot and Mouth. Nathaniel had an easy time of believing. Thomas had a hard time of believing. They had their differences. Yet God uses ordinary people. And there isn't any one type of personality that God doesn't use for his kingdom's sake. He uses every type. And just look in here. Look at this room. Look at those you might be watching with today. So we need to be aware of the personality differences. But we need to accept the, the personality differences. As Paul said, accept others just as Christ has accepted you. I've discovered this. The people who look up to God rarely look down on people. People who look up to God rarely look down on people. So what does it mean to accept one another? I believe it means to realise that differences are not a matter of right or wrong, of good or bad, that we're just different. So accept each other because God loves variety. God loves personality differences. God loves that this church is full of different personalities. And we need to as well. I love Romans 14, 13. It says, so let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. Or as the Phillips version puts it, let us stop turning circle eyes on one another. Let us rather be critical of our own conduct and see that we do nothing to make a brother or a sister stumble. So I don't criticize. Because, you know, when we start lining ourselves up with other people and their personalities, we're lining them up against my personality. God doesn't want us to do that. Don't set yourself up as the standard. Now, let me just put a little side note here. Sometimes people can do this. They can use their personality as an excuse. 
And God doesn't want us to do that either. Oh, it's my personality. I'm always late. Or I do this because that's just my personality. No, it's not, an, it's not an out. Here's the thing. It's so important for us to have an, an awareness and also an acceptance. But again, that's still not enough. A sign, I think, of real maturity, and I hope you, you're keen to do this, is not only to be aware and accept, but appreciate, finally, the different personalities. You value people's uniqueness. You see God's wisdom in making us all different. You're grateful that we're not all alike, that it's really good that in this place there's a great balance. If we're all like me, it would be out of balance. But, but it's good that there's a range of personality. This is how God's created. This is great. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, All of you together are the one body of Christ. And each of you is a separate, key word here, and necessary part of it. Remember, right back when we started speaking this morning, God did not create anyone to take up space not what he's about he has a unique purpose a unique place for your personality for his kingdom's sake you are necessary but we're all necessary all personalities are necessary you know when when you sit down to eat your lunch today or dinner you're not going to sit down with two knives to eat you're going to have a fork and a knife if you do have two knives uh, well, good luck. But but might we do? We sit down with a fork and they're different, so it can the food can enter, sort of thing. We can pick it up and it can work. And I think I truly believe that that's true when it comes to a church being all that God wants it to be, and for you to be all that God wants it to be in your life for His purposes because of your personality. I love how Eric Reese in his book Shape he says this: If you appreciate the personality differences of the people around you it will it will not only make your life a whole lot easier but you'll become like jesus christ because jesus christ is aware of all the personalities he made them and he appreciates them to be christ-like means to see value in each of the differences he's given to people so today is very easy to do it because I'm talking about it. But what about when the challenge comes from someone's personality or the way they go about things? How will we respond? When people's personality might make us feel very uncomfortable. Romans 12.10 says, have a profound respect, love, devotion for each other. Appreciate, respect, love, devotion for one another. You know, sometimes it can be tough. Sometimes we see people that have negative characteristics, negative qualities, and it's hard to look beyond that. I want to give you a little tip that someone once gave me. Look beyond the negative and see what's being misused. Look beyond the negative and see what's being misused. If you're a believer of the living God, he expects you and I to follow and obey Romans 12, 10. Have a profound respect for one another. By being aware, accepting, and most importantly, appreciating others so that you can share God's greatest gift of Christ with people. Being said, a church community that commits to this has unity without sameness and differences without division. Let me read that to you again. A church community that's willing to be aware, accept, but most importantly, appreciate the different personalities that are in this place. They have a unity without sameness and differences without division. I want to encourage you. If you're visiting, you might be thinking, is there, what's going on in this place? No. I want to encourage you that this place has that. But don't lose it. 
keep accepting everyone that walks in the door, everyone that visitors, everyone that comes to the different ministries. And good, great purposes will happen for this church, but also through you, for his kingdom's sake. Let me pray. This week, I encourage you to take the time to answer this question. And it, uh, it, it's going to pop up on the screen here. But what, what does my personality indi indicate about the type of ministry that God wants me to have? Have, have a willingness Maybe screenshot this question, write it down. And to be bold enough throughout this week to, to maybe answer that. And ask yourself, am I in that ministry? And, and if not, why not? And, and what will I do about it? God, we, we, we come before you knowing that you are the creator God, the creator of all good things. And we praise you that there's such a range of personality that you have created because you love differences, you love uniqueness. And as you look into this place that we're meeting here and to those who are watching online, you, you see your creation who you love so very much and you've created in such a unique way, including their personality. And, and that personality can be used in great ways for your kingdom's sake. And, and my prayer would be that, that um, there'd be numbers of people this week who'd be willing to answer that question. What, why does my pers what, what does my personality indicate about the type of ministry that, that you, God, want them to be involved in? And if they're not in that place already, they'd be bold enough to, to actually act on that. I pray for each of us here as we, as we come before you, and especially those who might be struggling with this, but that we'd be willing to be aware and be able to accept and most importantly, appreciate others and their personality so that we can then share God's greatest gift of Jesus Christ with people. So we just want to praise you, God, that you want to continually use us for your kingdom's sake in great ways, including, including through the personality that you have given to us. We thank you for that in your precious name. Amen. Thanks, Chelsea. <laughs>